My name is Fonda Feeling, and I come to you today as a member of Solidarity for East Coast Sex Educators, or SEXY. And I come to you to talk to you about my experience working with Good Vibrations, as well as the formation of SEXY. Now, I am new to the company. I started work at Good Vibrations in January, but I am not new to the world of sex education or sex positivity. I have been a sex worker as well as a burlesque and circus performer since 2008, and I have worked as a sex educator and pleasure educator in various other retail locations as well as uh, private situations, one-on-one, -on -one, small group parties, that sort of thing. So I looked at the opportunity to work with Good Vibrations as something that I was excited about. I was excited to work with an established feminist, body positive, sex positive company. However, when I signed on to the store, I realized fairly early on that there was something rotten in the state of Denmark. Um, I got the impression from my coworkers that things weren't going so smoothly underneath at all. Um, and I was honestly having some questionable experiences as well. A lot of my experience felt invalid to the company, in particular one of the managers. Now, as a sex worker going into an education space, I wanted to facilitate candid conversations about sex work, as well as start to work on destigmatizing. Because as much as we can talk sex positivity and body positivity, there's still work that needs to be done. There are still habits that need to be unlearned, and all of us can do more to work more at it. However, in speaking to our manager, I got the impression that she was not doing the work. I felt judged and I felt like I couldn't talk to any of the higher ups in the company in my experience as a sex educator, um, sex worker, and I felt a little bit silenced in that way. Further down the line, we actually did start to talk about the potential of unionizing prior to the quarantine. But what really spurred us on was the recall process. Now, we started learning that the stores would be reopening from Instagram. We were not directly told. And then when we went to the manager and we were like, hey, what's up? She was like, well, we're going to talk to you all individually about it, but the stores are reopening. So uh, no more group communication. We're coming to you one on one. Um, and that's just not OK to not inform most of your workforce of exactly what's going on and leaving people hanging. And now I, uh, I was about a week away from finishing my three month probationary period with the store before quarantine started and I was told that seniority would not be affected. However, during my recall call with the manager, she made it clear that they would be starting my probationary period over and she emphasized that because of that there would no, be no need for due process and they could fire me for whatever, whenever and she wouldn't need to write me up or do anything like that. Probation thing is just my personal experience. I have experienced a lot of the same negative, um, really neglectful problems that many of my coworkers have found, including never knowing who to speak to, never even really knowing um, whose job was what, and constantly feeling a little bit lost by the company. And I really felt like I could not achieve one of my goals of candid conversation about sex work in a sex positive feminist space. I felt very judged by many people above me in the company. I felt like I couldn't be forthright about these things. And aside from my retail coworkers, I didn't feel supported in being able to talk to sex workers who came into the store about our mutual experiences. Um, I was afraid it would be seen as something that was crossing the line, even though, hi, sex positive workplace should be sex work positive too. But I guess that's just me and my coworkers. So now we sit, we wait, we have been on strike for four weeks, and we are waiting for Joel Kaminsky's response to our most recent set of demands. In the meantime, we have been working with other stores and other locations. This isn't just us. The sex education industry as a whole has a very large blind spot in the neglectful treatment of workers, and we at Sexy are not going to stop when we finish with good vibrations. The work never ends just like the work never ends when it comes to destigmatizing sex work. We're gonna keep pushing, and there's nothing Joel Kaminsky can do to stop us. And there's nothing anybody else can do to stop us because we are together. We are sexy and we're asking you to stand with us. Thank you.